What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to another video here at For Goodness Snakes 8 LLC. That's right, we got our business license, we got our LLC, we got our permits, so we are doing some big things down here in the sanctuary. Our goal in the next couple of years is to obtain a facility for all of our animals, so you guys can help us reach that goal by making sure that you like and subscribe and share all the videos that we put out there. Help us get our name out there. Help us share our mission. And let's get started into this video. So as always, before we start this video, we want to give a huge shout out to all of our patrons on Patreon. You guys are helping us every month to just support these animals, making our dreams come true. You guys are so supportive of us helping us on our mission, sharing and spreading the word of what we're doing here. And we just appreciate you all so much. Another shout out to everyone who is buying our merchandise. There is a link in the description if you guys wanna check out our merchandise. We do have some cool stuff going on there. And we have a whole new, brand new website that we just created. So make sure that you're going and subscribing and liking and checking out our link tree, following us on all of our social media platforms. This helps us so much grow, you guys. So we are so thankful for everyone who is doing that for us. Another shout out to our community for having us come and educate our youth. We have done Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, elementary schools, birthday parties. We are just so grateful to everyone who was involved in help pushing our business along and getting our name out there and what we do, our mission. You guys are all so awesome. And shout out to all the Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, all the kids at the birthday parties that we've been helping, elementary schools that we've been educating. We appreciate you guys too. You're part of our mission and you're part of why we do what we do. So make sure you're liking and subscribing. Make sure you're sharing our videos and keep educating yourself on these really cool animals that we call reptiles. <laughs> children, uh, being able to have a bigger enclosure with the proper lighting and all the things that she needs. These guys did a great job of caring for the snake and that is evident in how good she looks, how active she is, even for such an old girl. She does have some cataracts, but that's totally normal for the age of this animal. Um, so today's video is going to be all about our corn snakes. We do have two corn snakes down here. I love corn snakes. I think they're a great starter snake for anyone looking to get into this hobby. Um, these are great pets. They don't require a lot as far as their husbandry goes, so they're pretty easy to care for. And I'm gonna share with you guys how we care for ours. And if you're interested in getting one of these animals, how you can care for yours. So we went ahead and got Sally out for this video because I wanted you guys to see just how beautiful this animal actually is. This animal is living uh, actually far past her life expectancy, which is typically around 23 years old. She is still very active. Um, she's very healthy. Her weight is good. Um, she has a couple of cataracts on her eyes, which is totally normal given her, um, her age, but she's a very curious girl. Um, and she's making a lovely addition down here in the sanctuary. 
Um, now we have two corn snakes, which is really exciting because I love corn snakes, you guys. Corn snakes are some of the most amazing pets you can have as a pet snake. Um, they are what I always refer people to if they're trying to get their first pet snake and they don't really know what to do or which kind to get. These guys make a great first time snake pet because they are so easy to handle. They're so easy to maintain and they are so easy to care for. Because they are colubrid, they eat every few days or so. Um, they are a little bit more of a hunter than a, your ball python, who is more of an opportunistic and ambush eater. Um, so it is likely they will be hungry a lot more than your python species or even your boa species, who are a very low and slow growing snake because of their very, very slow metabolism. These guys, guys have a much higher metabolism. Um, they grow a little bit quicker, um, just like their cousins, the California king snakes, um, your hognose snakes. These are all members of the colubrid family. Your milk snakes, um, your black snakes, your garter snakes. Colubrids are everywhere. There are over 2,700 species of colubrids, and these guys can be found right here in the United States, all along the eastern side of the United States. So we're looking at Louisiana, Kentucky, um, clear down into Florida. They are very common. Um, and you guys might know them as the red rat snakes. So these guys also are known as red rat snakes. So if you're hearing that term uh, around where your locality is, that is gonna be, yes, your corn snakes. This animal is diurnal. So that means that they're gonna be up during the day. That's another reason why they make such a great pet to have because while you're sleeping, so are they. Sally is up moving around throughout the day. We can see her climbing on her twigs and doing all the things. She's very excited to explore. If I move things around in her enclosure, she gets really excited and starts checking things out. So they are most active when we are. Corn snakes are also mostly terrestrial. Although they are found in abandoned buildings and you know climbing different limbs and trees to try to find prey because they do like to hunt. Most of the time, these guys are gonna stay secretive and hidden underneath the ground in rodent burrows, trying to find their prey that way, which is really cool because they do hunt unlike a lot of other snakes who are more opportunistic and ambush eaters. So they're gonna kind of stay where they're at and wait for food to come to them, whereas the corn snake actually will go out looking for prey. And another really cool interesting fact about the corn snake is a prey, a prey item on their menu could actually be another snake. So these guys also are cannibalistic and they will eat other snakes of other species and even snakes of their own species and with their cousin the california king snake um, they've even been known to eat themselves which is a very interesting and strange fact but they are a constrictor um, some colubrids are not some colubrids swallow their prey live but the corn snake does tend to constrict its prey um, before eating. Okay, so we went ahead and put Sally back and I got out our other corn snake. This is Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper was a rescue and there's quite a story behind him as well. But we're gonna give you just a little bit more information about the corn snake before we get into the animal stories and how we obtained them. The scientific term for the corn snake, and this goes for any and all rat snakes, is ilafe. Ilafe is the scientific classification for specifically rat snakes, um, with their higher classification being colubrid. I use the word colubrid a lot or colubridae because they're my favorite snakes. I love colubrids. I think they're amazing. They're beautiful animals. They are, there are 2,700 different species of colubrids. Um, their locality is pretty much around where I live. So this is gonna be uh, the majority of the snakes that you find in the United States. Uh, these guys specifically are going to range from anywhere from Louisiana to Kentucky to Florida. Um, so they are indigenous to my area, which is why I think colubrids are so cool. Colubrids also uh, can be venomous and non-venomous. So unlike their cousin, the elapids, which house some of the most venomous snakes in the entire world, um, these guys are a little less harmful and um, they are a little more docile, although elapids are known to be pretty docile as well. Um, these guys at least don't have that crazy amount of venom that could potentially take your life. So that is why I am a big fan of the colubrids because they just look so cool. Um, a lot of them do ha have those bright colors and um, crazy patterns that do kind of make them look like they might be a dangerous venomous snake, but they are not. And they are, a lot of them are constrictor snakes or um, 
Actually, some of them are known to just swallow their prey live, which I think is really cool too. So the classification of colubra just houses so many different unique species. And I feel like that's probably why they are some of my favorite snakes, like the hognose snake, which is a rear fang venomous snake. It is known as a colubrid. Um, clear to your milk snakes, your very harmless, cute little milk snakes, along with um, any kind of rat snake, black snake, garter snake, um, king snakes, anything like that are also in the classification of colubrids. So I think that's what makes them my favorite. Um, but the corn snake definitely has my top pick for uh, the best starter snake uh, if you're going to get into this hobby or if you're going to start keeping snakes. So let's get into a little bit about uh, Dr. Pepper's story because as most of you are watching, if you are um, familiar with snakes, specifically colubrids, you would know that they are a very rounded bodied snake. Although they are a slender bodied snake, um, they really shouldn't be uh, super pointy up at the top like you can see Dr. Pepper is. See how his spine, see how his spine sticks out quite a bit there. He's a little wild. So Dr. Pepper has kind of a sad story. And if you are watching this and you're one of the kids who have seen my presentations, you know all about Dr. Pepper and his very sad story. Um, the good news is we are working really hard to get weight put back on Dr. Pepper and to get him feeling tip top and on his best behavior. Um, because sometimes when snakes go a long time without eating, they can be a little snippy um, and they can just be really tired and sluggish. Um, so he is starting to put some weight on. As you can see, he's a very curious guy. He's all over the place checking stuff out. Um, but Dr. Pepper, Pepper was rescued from an abandoned home. Uh, someone had left their home, moved out, and left several animals there to fend for themselves for over six months. So this poor guy went six months without food or water, heating lamps, uh, anything. So we are lucky to even have him be alive and um, be able to keep him as a pet and an educator in our program. So we are very grateful that we got our hands on Dr. Pepper and are able to help him um, and recover him as he was just so frail and so sickly and so, so skinny, even skinnier than this. And I know that's hard to believe because if you know anything about colubrids, specifically elaphis, they are a little bit rounder bodied and that big point up there at the top is never a good sign for these guys. So uh, keep rooting for Dr. Pepper because we do want him to uh, put on as much weight as he can to become as healthy as he can, uh, but we don't want to overfeed him because these guys are at risk to having fatty liver disease, just like most reptiles. Um, so making sure he's on a really good feeding schedule. They do eat about every three days, um, three to five days. Uh, for him, it's gonna be a little bit more uh, just because we are trying to pack that weight on him and get him um, to be at his best potential. Um, so that's what we're working on here with Dr. Pepper. He's a great asset to the team here. Um, he's great with kids. He really, really, really loves being handled. He loves getting out. He's very curious. And since we got him, he has done a 180 as far as his personality goes. Um, so yeah, so Dr. Pepper is um, hopefully he's going to start packing that weight on and we're going to start seeing some really good improvements from him as time goes. Let's go over a little bit about the husbandry requirements for corn snakes. If you guys are looking for a very first beginner pet uh, snake, the corn snake is the snake for you because their husbandry requirements are very minimal and they don't need um, a whole lot of humidity. Um, their heat, the ambient temperature uh, can be a little bit more lax. Um, and they are just a very easy animal to take care of. Their temperament is very mild compared to its cousin, the king snake, who can be a little bit temperamental and bitey. Corn snakes are very docile, very sweet, and their husbandry is pretty mild compared to a lot of other colubrids. So let's get into what you need as far as um, husbandry for your corn snake. Much like other reptiles, the corn snakes are going to need a gradient of temperature. They'll need an ambient temperature of anywhere from 75 to 82 degrees. Uh, their cool side is gonna remain on the more lower 70s and the warm side is gonna remain on the mid 80s. This is a really easy gradient of temperature to achieve. Um, especially since humans are pretty comfortable 
uh, living in around 70 degree temperatures. So uh, the corn snake would need like maybe a small heat lamp, um, no more than 50 watts. Um, maybe you could do a 75 watt depending on how big the enclosure is. Most of the time people are keeping these animals in like a 40 to 55 gallon, which is a really good size for the corn snakes as long as you're giving them enough room to burrow. So making sure they have plenty of substrate. They are a burrowing snake. Um, they like to burrow and climb. So I do like to put um, some different kinds of limbs and sticks and all kinds of things for them to climb on, uh, but also about four inches of substrate for them to dig and burrow into. They also need uh, a lot of different hides. I use PVC piping all through their enclosures. They love to climb and slither through the pipes. Um, and I also like to use um, just regular hides. The coconut bark hides, I think that they are inexpensive and they seem to do really well in the corn snakes enclosure. They don't hold a lot of humidity if you're um, housing one of these snakes. They don't need a lot of humidity. So spritzing the tank all the time and stuff like that isn't necessary. Uh, one thing I do think is necessary though is they are going to need a bowl of water big enough for them to crawl into. I have noticed that a lot of, if not all of my colubrids really do like to soak their bodies um, in their water dish while they are in shed. So it is very important to make sure that um, you do have a water dish that is big enough for them to submerge their whole bodies into. So although it isn't necessary for the survival of these snakes, I do like to make sure that all of my animals down here in the sanctuary are getting proper UVB, UVA, which is what they would obtain from the natural sunlight if they were in their natural environment in the wild. Studies have shown that providing UVs for your reptile is a very beneficial um, for their bones and their overall health um, while digesting an animal, a prey animal. Um, it does aid in a lot of the synthesis of D3 and calcium. Uh, so it is, I think, in my personal opinion, vital to provide them with those UVs. Um, just to make sure that they are getting the proper and adequate nutrients and the absorption of that nutrients, um, which is what is so beneficial about providing those UVs for your reptiles. So as I was saying earlier, the corn snake does need to eat every three days or so. And it just so happens that today is the day that we feed Dr. Pepper. Um, so we do frozen thawed here. Um, if you guys have like a weak stomach or um, you don't want to watch this, uh, maybe stop this video right now um, as I am about to feed Dr. Pepper his frozen thawed little mouse. Um, we do frozen thawed for most all of our animals only except for one um, because our mangrove monitor is unable to um, figure out how to eat frozen thawed. So she is one of the only ones that we um, do not do frozen thawed for and she does eat live, which is sad, um, but it is the circle of life. So uh, keep watching if you would like to see Dr. Pepper eat his mouse. Um, and if you would not like to see that, uh, maybe just skip to the next video. Okay, so my suggestion to anyone who is feeding their animal, um, it's to always use tongs. Now, Dr. Pepper is such a docile animal. I don't feel like using tongs is necessary with him. I actually don't really use tongs with most of my colubrids. Um, so we are just gonna reach back in there. I'm gonna try to um, video this as best as I can. Um, I'm not really worried about him biting me. It doesn't really hurt that bad. A lot of people have this misconception that a snake bite is so awful, but the truth of the matter is they're really not that bad. And honestly, you barely even need a Band-Aid most of the time um, if you are bitten by one of these smaller colubrids. So what I like to do is place my mouse in some lukewarm water um, to warmer water. Uh, that's gonna make that mouse um, appear to be uh, live. Even though they don't have heat sensing pits, it's also gonna help um, it digest a little bit easier because it is warmer. If you were to feed it a freezing cold mouse, um, the snake's gonna have trouble digesting it. So I do like to make sure it is warmed up a bit in the warmer water. And I'm gonna see if I cannot get Dr. Pepper to come out this way so you guys can see him. Okay, so he is already looking for his mouse. I'm gonna see if I can't get him to come a little further out over here. Here he comes. And we'll see if 
He won't show his little face for us. Come on, Dr. P, come this way. Come on. Here we go. You're close, buddy, it's right there. It's right there. Watch how gently he takes this, it's too funny. There we go. Good job, Dr. P. Very good. There we go. You guys got to see that. That's pretty cool. Now we'll watch him swallow. So much like all snakes, um, Dr. Pepper can dislocate his jaw um, and eat things pretty big compared to his body size. However, you shouldn't really feed your snakes anything bigger than the girthiest part of their body, um, just for the easiest digestion possible. So all of my animals get feeders that are about the size of the girthiest part of their body. Dr. Pepper does eat a couple of times a week, so um, that's really okay. Um, putting weight back on him, we like to make sure that he is eating quite a bit. Colubrids eat a lot more than pythons and boas anyway. Um, <laughs> but this is some pretty cool footage you guys are getting to witness here. I usually don't video my snakes eating, um, but since we're talking about Dr. Pepper going so long without food or water, um, I thought I might show you guys what it looks like um, while he swallows his little mouse there. So we'll watch him get that down. Um, he is basically a giant spinal cord with a rib cage and a lot of muscle. So it's pretty easy for him to um, dislocate that jaw, get that mouse down and swallow it in a matter of minutes. We'll get in here a little bit closer so that you guys can see, look how cute he is. Good job, Dr. Pepper. And as you can see in his enclosure, he has many places that he can hide, um, burrow through. He's got little tunnels. So um, he's got some foliage that he can hide in. They do really like to not be seen. He's got this kind of like log here over on his warm side. Um, this water's off to his cool side just a bit to keep it from evaporating, but there are places on both his warm and cool side for him to hide. Um, his UVs are here. His heat lamp is here, which we actually don't have on um, because he hasn't really needed it. Um, and we're not putting the nighttime bulb on at night either because his um, enclosure is staying uh, pretty warm um, as we do have our heat on in the house since it's kind of cooler outside. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what his enclosure looks like. It's fairly easy. We do use topsoil and some coconut bark um, for the soil that he gets to burrow into. Um, that is his substrate. And that is what we use for all of our colubrids pretty much. Um, depends on obviously the locality of which we use more of uh, topsoil or the coconut husk or bark. Um, today, actually, I do need to get started um, cleaning and sifting out poop and doing all of that stuff in the sanctuary because everybody ate also on Sunday. So everyone has pooed since then and we need to clean that out. Jafar is just chilling on his big log. I also would like to wipe out all of the glass on the enclosures today as well. So it has been great chatting with you guys again and I'm so sorry that we have taken so long to put up another video, a full length video. Um, but we have just been so incredibly busy. Oh look, he's got it all the way down but the tail. How cool is that? He eats it so fast. And you can see him swallowing that. It's really neat how they push it down with their muscles. Snakes have so many muscles. Um, they are very strong animals, but also so beautiful to watch. Um, the circle of life, it is amazing. I hope you guys are enjoying this video. Again, thank you so much for coming here and subscribing to us, watching us, sharing our mission with your friends and uh, making sure that um, you are commenting and um, making sure you're hitting that like button and doing all the things that help us grow as a sanctuary. The faster we grow, the bigger we get, the more animals that we can help, which is our main goal and mission here at Four Goodness Snakes 8.
As always, thank you again to all of our patrons at Patreon. You guys are the best. You are helping us grow immensely. Um, we don't have a lot of patrons, but the patrons we have have become like family to me. I look forward to seeing them. We have our own Facebook page. Um, they are just basically like the family I chose for myself, but they kind of found me. It's pretty cool. Um, thank you to everyone who has subbed on YouTube. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your I keep you in my heart, in my heart